It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. This video is going to be the first of a multi-part series where I go through how I created, I guess, developed, revised, um, and bring to production the FanPad version 3. So in terms of a backstory for this, if this comes at a much later stage, because I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to be releasing all of this content, is um, I had wanted to create a functional block as a pad on the side for the purposes of complementing 60% keyboard. Now, I recently ran an interest check in relation to this, and I titled it as the fan pad, the 40% that your 60% leaves behind. Because in the general context of a 60% keyboard, you don't get the function keys, you don't get the uh, navigation cluster, which I call the home block, you don't get the arrow keys, and you don't get the numpad. And so by taking all of those elements and pairing it with a 60% keyboard, you have the full functionality of a 100% without having to use layers. I realized that with a 60%, you can get all of that functionality by using layers and function keys, but because I'm uh, an old dog and I'm really bad at memorizing layers, especially if I don't have something visual there to help me with it, uh, I figured it was actually easier to create it. Now, at that point in time, I had actually done a PCB, and you'll find videos in our playlist that show it, but I ended up with, with this, and, and this is the first sort of prototype version of the fan pad, and it drives off a Pro Micro there, you can see in the corner. Um, and it works, it plugs in, it works, it does the job. And in terms of its footprint, it's actually not much bigger than where it currently sits on a full size keyboard. But of course, you know, I thought, let's share this to the community. Let's see what other people might have to say, because if it's something that they're interested in, then I could potentially revise it and then do a group buy or put it into production and have proxies or put it into somebody else's store and so on and so forth. So, the interest check went out and it's been about a day now, a day and a half. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get a lot more feedback since generally on Reddit, things tend to fall off after the first sort of 24, 48 hours anyway, as more content comes onto the actual subreddit. So I've taken a lot of these points and I've decided, yes, I will make a revision and there will be some things that I will try to address. But as part of that process, I would document it in videos so that anybody who's interested in actually designing their own PCB will see the process that I have used. And I say that I have used because obviously there are a lot of other ways of doing this, which will be uh, for better or worse, you know, alternatives. I do not claim that this is the best way of doing things. I definitely do not claim that um, I'm doing things the most efficient way, but this is the way that I know how to do it. And hopefully it'll give you an idea or a general idea of the things that are involved. So let's go on to the first part, which is mapping out a layout for what you want to design and develop in Keyboard Layout Editor. So now I'm going to turn off this camera here simply because it's not going to be terribly useful and um, <laughs> It'll, it'll sort of get in the way of things. So let's just switch that off. Let's go on to my desktop and turn off our logo. So the first thing that you're gonna see here is of course the classic keyboard layout editor. This is an online tool, it's free, um, you know, developed by this Ian Prest fellow and contributors. So thank you very much because this is one of the best available tools out there. Now, if you actually don't have an account slash GitHub, I would recommend you do so because it allows you to save your layouts and formats. So you can see here under my save layouts, I've currently got 16 saved in here. You can see number 16 was one of the first things that I ever kind of played around with because back in September, back in September or August, depending on how the month here works, um, what is that? That is, that is definitely a month. So back in September 2016, was when I first thought about a fan pad block. So you can see, once you actually load it, I was messing around with trying to figure out how the layouts are. And you can see over here, I've got this really weird insert position, and that's actually from a Model F. Because after the meetup that I went to in Sydney, I saw the Model F had this 
staggered insert. And I thought that was actually more ergonomic. And you can see I sort of just threw some keys around and whatnot. And it was a very, very basic thing that just hadn't gone anywhere at the time. But if we go back to my sort of layouts now, the, the most recent version that has actually gone out is this version two, which is what I've managed to produce. And this is where I've had feedback on it because a lot of people didn't like this stagger up here in the top corner. They also found it a little bit weird to have this uh, this three switches over here in that formation. And I also had some requests in regards to turning the two U's into split one U's for Mac layout compatibility. Now I know that in a lot of Asian keyboard layouts as well as 96 key layouts, this is turned into two split U, uh, one U's as well so that you can have like a zero and a zero zero function if you're dealing with very large numbers. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually just go through the process of um, creating the layout from scratch. So I'm just gonna ooh, reload that. Um, so you, you would have seen just before uh, maybe that this was a default with a numpad on it. And I'm, I'm just going to go from where I am right now simply because it's easier because how I tend to work is I'll always start with the 104 layout because I can delete keys and move keys around. Now essentially what you need to play around with in keyboard layout editor is your mouse, um, shift control for highlighting and selecting keys and then your actual arrow keys plus delete. Now you can add keys up here and you can of course delete keys after you've selected keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag out this block with the mouse, highlight it and go boom, it's gone. I don't need these keys. I don't need the escape. And, and that's pretty much it. Now at this point in time, um, I was leaving that block over there just for ease of knowing that I had those extra keys, but I'll get around to that. What you can do is you can highlight keys with the drag and then using your arrow keys on the actual keyboard, you can move them around to whatever you like. The current iteration that I'm working with is that we're going to do a double row for the function keys. That, that was requested by a lot of people and uh, it makes sense, it makes sense. Some of the things that I sort of did in my original V2 version was that it was personal preference. There's nothing really more to it than that, but now that I'm offering something more to other people, Obviously, you know, it has to be something that's usable. It's going to be something that uh, will appeal to people as well as it's going to provide them with functionality. And at the same time, I still want it to preserve a certain feel about it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to accept changes simply because at the end of the day, I want something that will be able to offer a useful product for as many people as possible to a certain extent. So that is the, the very basic, basic format that you can see there that I'm moving towards and I can just shuffle that up and that becomes it. But I've got some gap spaces here and I was not and still am not a massive, massive fan in having these preset positions here. Now, the way that I thought about it and I got around it was, I'm just gonna take them off. And what I mean by that is, well, because this is a customizable pad, you put whatever you want there. I would not put, you know, print screen, scroll lock and pause break there, but that's just me. But if you want to put them there, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. Now at this point, we can use the standard uh, control copy and control paste, and then it'll give you a new sort of block, a new one U key. Of course, you can always just use the add key function up here at the top to do the same thing. And I'm going to drop down two one use to fill in the blank space up the top because well you know it's kind of a waste of space and then for the purposes of compatibility for a mac layout i'm also going to add a couple of uh, extra one use simply because i can and if you don't want to use this as a numpad but you want to just use this as a massive massive macro pad of course once again you sure can so let's just go and do that as well. So that is actually the final layout that I'm going to be attempting to create my V3 against, if that makes any sense, if that makes any sense at all. 
Now, uh, it's it's not a terribly difficult or ambitious kind of layout, but it's something that at least that kind of works relatively easily, and you know, it's something that we can follow relatively well. The only tricky part is that I kind of still need to get my head around fully is how to design it so that it actually has the option for compatibility for the two U's here um, into the one U's as desired. And then of course, how you're gonna set that matrix up when you program it and so forth. Now for me, what I would personally do is if I had this pad and I was using it, which I will of course get to, is I would probably put my print screen up here. And then that might be like calculator. And then over here, um, you know, I might put like the tilde key and then not quite sure what I would fill in with these other two. But for me, because I'm so accustomed to a standard numpad, I wouldn't change the two U's out. I would just leave it. But of course, the PCB hopefully will have those one U compatibilities. I did get a request about moving page up, page down into the blank spaces here next to it. But I felt like I really wanted to preserve the arrow cluster because habit wise for me I actually rest my fingers on the top edge of the left and right keys and I do on the top of the up key but in this context I'm not going to be able to do that if I want to maintain that three by three block but it's not a big deal it's not a deal breaker for me so yeah that's just that's just compromises right adult adult life is full of compromises so at this point in time you can you can put in notes, you can put in details. Um, the raw data is here because you can copy and paste this into Swirl KB to generate sandwich cases and things like that. Uh, well, plates and sandwich cases. And then you've got summaries for the number of actual switches you have. So we've gone from potentially something that's had 42 keys to something that's gonna have, you know, an additional, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, another, another five keys on top. So yeah, it, it's just, of course, a, uh, a change, a development, and that's how it is. Now, I've actually already saved this layout as some eagle-eyed viewers might have seen, and I've actually called that the, the, the V3. So I'm just gonna load the V3. Yep, I'm gonna navigate away from it. And you can see under the sort of properties, I've just added a bunch of notes to show my own change log of what's happened in between to get to where it currently is. Now, um, I had a picture of this already saved. So uh, let's see if, so there's the picture there that I've saved. And the reason why I'm opening this up in paint is because now we're gonna start playing around with uh, just mapping out your matrix because mapping out your matrix is really really important and this will help later on when you do your schematics because you need to understand what rows and what columns and how it is connected uh, if you don't do that then you're going to potentially have a bad time so let's just pick a uh, let's pick a neutral dot color i suppose and we'll go with green with a circle and for each one of these, we're just going to do a uh, a little loop in the middle. Actually, let's just uh, let's just do a nice one, and then we should be able to. I hope, maybe. No, uh, this is paint. I forgot. Paint doesn't do things very well. So let's see. Oh no, didn't like that. Okay, so <laughs> maybe I should have done this in Inkscape. Anyway. We're just gonna quickly draw a bunch of circles and that way we can make sure that we have our switch connectivities. And we'll be using this, of course, to, do, to develop our actual matrix in this. Now, if there's an easier way to do this, please, by all means, do it. Um, and of course, tell me so that I will actually know what in the heck uh, I can do next time to make my own life and everybody else's life easier if they're watching this video of course just comment in the comments below and then people if they're interested can check down and see if actually there has been a positive comment to assist with that now I had done this kind of exercise previously with uh, my fanpad v2 and it was so useful at the end when I was actually doing the matrix for the programming using KB firmware's website 
because the natural layout, once you enter the rows and columns, it doesn't tell you the correct layout uh, natively. It just assumes a, a particular grid pattern and tries to, to format that. And then it's up to you, of course, to modify that to your own requirement. Now you'll notice that I'm actually putting the center for these two U's simply because it does kind of change things a little bit. So I'm just finishing up on these green circles as, as rough as they are. Probably should have done this in Inkscape. Okay, so we're gonna need to draw some lines. Let's go with uh, red for rows and there we go. So that's gonna be row one, row two, row three, well, we're going to label these in a second anyway. Oh, that last circle ended up being a, uh, a red one because I changed the colors while it was actually still highlighted. There you go. You can, you can turn back to being that color. Um, and then Let's go with a different color for our columns. So, oh, I'm still on a circle. Go, there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that, and there's that. Now you'll notice that these ones here are getting selected by that row but these ones aren't getting selected by a row and then vice versa with the columns as well uh, and that's really just a matter of it's, it's a little bit tricky but we will kind of understand that in a second so I'm just going to go oh, stop doing that go back to being blue okay now can I go to red I can so what I'm going to do here though is now I'm going to just put in my line but I kind of need to do it as a dash so that I can understand what's happening here and then uh, it's going to go like that and then alternatively for the columns now that I've got that done I'm going to go from that Oi, get back to these guys here like that now we got to do some text just so that we know what in the Dickens is going on and uh, let's go with row zero all right let's move that One, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six. And then down here, I'm actually going to also describe this as row six because it is actually row six. It's just a substitution of that row six. And then up the top, we're gonna to do it similarly where we're gonna call it column zero, column one, column two, column three, column four, column five, column six. And then over here, this is gonna be column six. So there we go. So we've actually got a seven by seven matrix now for a total of 14 pins, which from memory, I believe the Pro Micro actually supports 17 pins. So we should still have some free pins if we need them for anything else. Uh, fancy that kind of thing. And now you actually have your row and column assignment. So later on, when you come to do your matrix mapping out in KB firmware, you can go, okay, so for this particular matrix, it has to look like this. And that is row two and column five. That is row three and column four. And also when you do your schematic in KiCad, KiCad, however you want to pronounce it, 
this will also assist you putting that together. Now you'll notice, of course, there are blank spaces here. So column zero, row five does not exist. It is mapped to column one, row five. And so you'll have to make sure that your, your matrix matches that. And similarly, so when you come to the row six, what happens here, right? What is going on here and what is going on here? Because these blip through. So we would actually map this as that. And then if we can take our little eraser, if we zoom in, it starts getting a bit chunky, but that's okay. And we would turn that into a dotted line like so and then that would also be a dotted line similarly so that's going to be a dotted line that can become a dotted line and we'll go back to our line so we're going to go down to there and then for our column what we're going to do for that is it's going to become a blue line, which will be from that column down to there. And we'll use our raising tool and blip those as well as dotted lines. Okay. So that is essentially what that key map is going to look like. So, uh, yeah, nice and easy. Can going to save that obviously for future reference uh, if anything I'm just going to crop that to make it a little bit smaller so it fits a little bit neater on the screen when I do open it and have it hanging around so that's it for the part one for this video and that's just a very basic this is how you use KLE to lay out an, a, a, a layout <laughs> to lay out a layout to lay out a keyboard layout a, a key map layout it's up to you if you want to label the keys individually or not and you can do that by having it in the properties you can put legends you know in this sort of three by three grid in their position you can change colors uh, keyboard layouts also really fantastic because you can do other things in it such as mess around with you know key sets uh, if you want to do color key sets and stuff like that so for example this uh you know messing around with it i call this the bacon and egg so there's a strip of bacon and then you've got an egg fried egg over here you can color it and whatnot, and they do have color swatches, so signature plastic colors, you've got GMK colors, and so on and so forth, which is just really cool. So uh, I don't know what that's not showing up very well there, but uh, maybe it's a matter of the fact that I've got it in full screen or something. But, oh no, there we go. If you select the key, it comes up with the actual color swatches. And, and that allows you to have a sort of general idea of what colors you can have to play with if you want to create your own keycap sets for those particular manufacturers. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much for checking out this part one. Hopefully we'll have the rest of the parts coming out relatively soon whenever I get around to uh, doing them. So until next time, happy clacking.